Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to my brothers and sisters in Christ in the Balikatan <clears throat> family. In our world that has been recently overtaken and overwhelmed by multiple health, economic, and financial crises brought upon by COVID-19, my heart goes out to the millions around the world whose lives have been profoundly altered by sickness, sufferings, death, the loss of jobs and income, hardships, and the endless worries that all this now entails. Our human experience with suffering and death has been our lot, as Adam's rebellious descendants in a world that has now been upended by this recent crisis. We now live in a broken and fallen world that is under God's holy judgment because of our rebellious sinfulness against Him. It is against this uh, awful backdrop of God's judgment and condemnation when God embarked on His redemptive mission to rescue us from our terrible eternal destiny. He sent His only Son, Jesus, into our world so that He can be the ultimate sacrifice acceptable to God, a sacrifice that would exonerate us from His holy judgment and pave the way for our sins to be forgiven and be reconciled to God. And one Good Friday, more than 2,000 years ago, his son Jesus was flogged. He was ridiculed. He was beaten and ultimately crucified and died on the cross. And he who was without sin was treated like the worst sinner and died through the most painful punishment that humans have ever invented. As Jesus breathed for the last time, what were his final words in the Gospel of John? It is finished. Now, in retrospect, even Jesus' disciples did not immediately grasp and fully understand the meaning of his death. In fact, from a human and scriptural perspective, we may ask, should we not consider the crucifixion and death of Jesus on the cross as an unmitigated failure and tragedy? We must remember, too, what God's Word says in the book of Deuteronomy, that those who die on a wooden cross are considered as a curse by God. However, here is a profound truth from the Apostle Paul himself explains what the meaning and the power of the cross is. Simply put, the cross was God's way of taking away our sin through His Son, Jesus' sacrifice. In the book of Romans, we are told that very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus' crucifixion and death on the cross made it possible for our sins penalty of death to be laid upon Jesus so that by dying for us, He paid on our behalf the penalty of eternal death that we so richly deserved. <clears throat> when Christ exclaimed before dying that it is finished, He completed God's redemptive work of providing the only acceptable means by which mankind can be saved from sin and eternal death. In the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. In the Gospel of John, Jesus who told his disciples, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This is exactly what the power of the death of Jesus signifies, means, he willingly and sacrificially gave his own life so that we as condemned sinners destined to be eternally separated from the Holy God can now be saved, forgiven and reconciled to our God. What then is God saying to us as we are grapple with the COVID-19 crisis in our midst? From his word, we learn that God is surely more than capable to transform the current COVID-19 crisis into an outcome that will serve his ultimate and sovereign kingdom purposes. In His Word, we are reminded that God can accomplish great things, such as turning that which is evil into that which is good. We remember Jacob's son, Joseph, who was tragically sold by his brothers because God would eventually use Joseph to save his family's lives during a famine. And who of us could possibly imagine that the unspeakable tragedy that befell Jesus when he was crucified would eventually be powerfully used by God as the ultimate sacrifice that appeased God's holy wrath while allowing us sinners to experience His forgiveness and reconciliation. In the midst of this pandemic that has caused widespread suffering, death, and financial hardship and catastrophe, 
we know that it is the power of God, the sin in the cross of Jesus, that provides us with hope for God's deliverance, hope for His redemption, and hope for our salvation. It was the cross that made it possible for Jesus to declare the radiant, life-giving, inspiring, and eternal hope that He is indeed the resurrection and the life, who has conquered death, and that those who believe in Him, even though they die, will live. As we therefore meditate today on how His body was broken, and how His blood was shed on our behalf on the cross, we can confidently declare and proclaim that we who were and are dead in our sins have been forever freed from our eternal destiny of being separated from God by what Jesus has powerfully accomplished for us on the cross at Calvary. As I end this message, may you and your family sense and experience deeply God's powerful hope embodied in His amazing grace, His comforting presence, His relentless faithfulness, His abundant mercies, and His all-encompassing protection and safety for such a time as this. Amen.